The Deep House, a thalassophobic's worst nightmare. A 2021 horror film that just isn't talked about enough. Underwater terror that'll leave you in a trance. At least that's what TikTok keeps telling me. The TikTok side of movie recommendations is interesting, especially when it's horror slash disturbing films. I get tagged often, but I never really give them too much thought because it always seems to be more of generic guy just plucking titles from top 10 lists without actually watching the films. Also, it doesn't help that one of the first TikToks I saw began by recommending the very disturbing nightmare fuel that is Secret Obsession? <laughs> One of the most internally flawed movies I've ever reviewed. Just outright negligent script wise. And aside from just being a bad movie, I also don't know what the disturbing aspect is. I think someone dies in the movie. Boy, are you in for a shock. <laughs> Life's about to be crazy. <laughs> disturbing movies on Netflix you need to watch. This first movie is insane. It's called Secret Obsession. <laughs> that movie's dick. <laughs> I've gotten tagged on the deep house a few times, and at first glance, this movie seems to focus around some divers dealing with zombie-like creatures underwater, and I actually really like this movie poster too. I also thought it was kind of fun that I'm terrified of the ocean. Damp animals are gross. The idea of diving, snorkeling, anything where I'm in the water and not on a sturdy vessel, I'm good. I'll keep my review non-spoiler for a minute to start this off for those of you who are looking for more of that type beat, and then I'll give it the full treatment afterwards. Please enjoy. And speaking of Deep House, Drake just dropped his new album, which you can listen to now on your new Everyday Earbuds. Raycon, today's sponsor. Shut up, I know what you're thinking. Hey, uh, Gigi, those earbuds look like they'll fall out mid-workout. <laughs> Nope. Will not budge. Sound better than ever. And yes, as always, quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. You see, sometimes I vacuum with these on, but the vacuum is loud and tries to interrupt my listening of YouTube's Darkest Videos 3. Hold this bad boy real quick, three seconds. Pop it in isolation mode. The world is now silent. It's just me and royalty-free spooky ambiance, parentheses, three hours. Magical. Also, fun fact, they are Siri and Alexa compatible. I mean, it's no wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 49,000 five-star reviews. So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash and thank you, Raycon, for sponsoring this video. Mwah. Back to the video. The Deep House directed by... Alexandre Bustillo and Julien Mori, who also directed 2007's Inside, which is another movie I talked about, which I enjoyed, take their aim at a young couple who are, get this, YouTubers. So they suck. They're vloggers who like to poke around mysterious and haunted areas for content. And a fully submerged house is next on their list, and as you can expect, things do not go as planned. I do enjoy this concept. Full underwater suspense that has nothing to do with fucking sharks or fish. I'm on board. But alas, I think the movie falls short overall. Everything that's not underwater somehow came off more clunky than actual underwater acting. Our two main characters are super one note. Guys, we've seen this movie on land a lot of fucking times. It's a bit confusing for me, honestly. It seems to take this slow paced approach to really let you settle in to this uncomfortable ambiance, which I like, but then just fucking shit all over that. Like some wad just stepped in and he was like, hey, you guys wanna put in some really doofy ass jump scares that are all awkwardly placed? There's not even a lot, but I just hate that they're in there. To me, they cheapen the movie. I kept arguing back and forth in my head as to how much real underwater footage I was actually watching. And at one point I had just convinced myself that I had to be watching a heavy hand of CGI, but apparently I'm wrong. Apparently the film was made almost completely underwater. So that's kind of sick. And also explains a lot of the miscommunications in dialogue and facial expressions that we see throughout the movie. I was along for the ride. I actually felt something in some suspenseful moments, but the deep house having the inevitable side effects of underwater acting and directing, I think only scratches the surface of what could have been and then just kicks us out of the door in a scrambled shitty hurry. Five out of 10. There's my Ebert for you guys. Now let's talk spoilers. I'll give you more of a play by play and we'll have some fun or at least try to because there's not that much here. We begin with the new young vlogging couple on the scene. Watch out, Ace Family. We got Ben and Tina vlogs. Their channel name is actually TB Urbex. And I'll be honest, 
somehow worse than Ben and Tina vlogs. <laughs> they take the first 15 minutes to introduce our main characters. I'll take 15 seconds. Ben wants more views on their ominous travel vlogs and is willing to take risks to gain them. Tina gets scared easily and is not as dedicated to the vlogs, but she still joins and has her fun. How much left over time I got? Like four minutes? The Deep House, more like the shallow cast. <laughs> let, me, let me try that one again. The Deep House, more like <laughs> Shallow cat. After heading to a location that is not what they expected, Ben just happens to strike up a chat with random beachgoer Pierre. Pierre tells him for a small fee he can direct them to an area perfect for them to explore. A lake with a fully submerged house that used to be part of a village that suffered devastating floods. You would think a pair of seasoned travelers would be a bit more up on the red flags from locals. They take up his offer and he rides with them. Pierre almost goes fucking cross-eyed staring at Tina's knees for like half the ride. And then he drops the bomb last second that they have to cover the last couple miles by foot. And their reaction is... What? What? Bummer. Thanks for the heads up, Big P. You are two tourists following a local's directions to an area that he says is not marked on maps. It hasn't cracked one smile, by the way. And he has now sprung a last minute forest expedition on you to travel blindly into the wilderness while you are carrying very expensive diving and recording equipment. By the way, small reminder, just in case you forgot. He was eye fucking Tina for like at least a mile. And Pierre literally speaks villain. Just to know the family motto. C'est un bon présage. But here they go, having the time of their lives. So is the bold one, and you're the scared one. Oh, Pierre's seen this movie. So these are your only defining characteristics, right? Yeah. Pierre ups the creep factor last minute just to reassure the people asleep in the audience that something bad is about to happen. And just to be annoying, what kind of trade-off is this for Pierre? Like, the amount of shit he has to do for... A small fee doesn't sound fair unless that small fee is a firstborn. He's taking so much time out of his day. He had to hike these couple miles as well, even though he told you to eat a dick and didn't help you carry anything, but still. And now he's supposed to wait here for an undisclosed amount of time and assume you don't just die in a terrible accident and then he's just fucking stranded. I mean, I know he's gonna leave right now, but in the hypothetical, why would they think that he would put up with this? Does this face look patient to you? Oh hey, it's the beginning of the movie. Here you start to get a glance at the difficulty of trying to guide actors underwater to perfectly sync up with what their characters are supposed to be saying and feeling because the directors were always above water. There was no fancy form of communication. It sounds like they just took basketball timeouts to regroup and then just sent them back in. It sounds terrible, I'll be honest. They both have 60 minutes of oxygen. Ben's got a fancy watch that can play music for them and also guide their underwater drone that follows them. They screw around a bit and realize the house is pretty much much barricaded for whatever reason, but they managed to find an inn. But that's not before we have a classic CGI catfish jump scare to shit down the Tone's throat. Jump scare warning. Enjoy. Voila. Why yes, that was very bad, but I can't play ball with the exploration that follows. An underwater home that has been oddly preserved for so long that is actually shot underwater, that's fun. The sounds of the water combined with the light whirring of the drone, having their music malfunction a bit. I like getting eased in here. They don't jump out the window right away. And they also don't take a lot of the easy jump scares that they could have taken. Tina, quick selfie for our followers. Oof. Does it have to be in front of a dead animal? You're in a family's home? that was mercilessly flooded. You draw on a line at the decor? They start to uncover more and more unnerving clues regarding the history of this house, seeing missing kid posters and satanic imagery. What kind of kids were those? Weird kids. <laughs> Yeehaw! Familiar with this place, are you? <laughs> Why don't you whip us up a little meatloaf, honey? Might be the only time it doesn't come out dry. So the real question is, how do you follow up a catfish jump scare? You gotta go bigger, right? Are we gonna see a shark? An octopus? What's that? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? You've seen this. Shit. What the hell was that? Correct. What the hell is that doing in a kitchen? Well, he doesn't fit in the pantry. What the hell is that doing in a kitchen? Well, he was technically bred. Maybe the family were just religious drunks. Well, we might as well drown in wine. What the hell is that doing in a kitchen? Well, Pete's saying grace. Hmm. 
I mean, can you blame the guy for wanting at least one more supper? I think that's enough blasphemy for this video. <laughs> Let's move on. There's a secret door behind Jesus, and this is when shit gets real. Go away, Shane! This is our content! Go back to Chuck E. Cheese, you moocher. As if there would be any type of conspiracy theories that So there are two bodies chained up, also incredibly preserved, with a pentagram design underneath. This door randomly opens, Ben goes to take a look, and he sees eyeballs, a detached hand, and... <laughs> that. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad you're back. I got lots of stuff to tell you about. I guess it's just extra, extra confirmation that this place is fucked. But Ben then lies to Tina about what he saw because I don't know why. What was behind the door? Nothing. Small cameras. I felt like it had to be two options. It's either he doesn't want to freak her out because then she'll make them leave. And being the greedy character that he is, he probably wants to film more. But they try to leave right after anyway. So that's not... Why? Or it's that he doesn't want to freak her out because she'll panic and deplete her oxygen quicker, but there's no follow through for that reasoning. Sure, shortly after, they discover the way they came in from is now sealed off and he tries to calm her down then to preserve her oxygen, but these scenes don't pair to make the first scene make sense. And it's a really small detail that didn't deserve that much thought, but I... I, why? Why are my characters just doing things now? Jump scares. I think this next one perfectly illustrates my frustration with them in this movie. I'm gonna show it to you first. It won't catch you off guard, don't worry. You'll see it coming. It's gonna be fine. Breathe like me. Okay, so I don't mind this creeping shot here. This is a snazzy trailer shot. But what drives me up the wall is the very unnecessary follow-up shot. <laughs> You've already surprised us with the scare. There's a doughy-faced, unknown girl that is floating towards us out of the shadows. And you can have a follow-up to that, but this specific follow-up blows. Let's now abruptly play the jump scare noise, make her scream for no reason whatsoever, and even worse, have this goofy fucking post zoom in shot that even continuity wise looks silly. I might just be being a priss, but I can't stand that scene because of that. They're trying to desperately find an exit, and I think they figured the first catfish jump scare was so good that the people would be dying for a sequel. <laughs> Former catfish who's now not catfishing, but thinks she might be getting catfish. A catfish repeat offender. I mean, at least there's a reason for the catfish reappearing here because they figure if he got back in there, then he might be able to lead them to an exit. But still, is making your audience maybe flinch here worth the cheap jump scare? I don't know, it just, I don't, I don't think so. Both catfish jump scares have been poop. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. I like this next scene for the most part because they try to get a little weird, which I appreciate. A song randomly comes on their airways. Tina tries to exit through a ceiling grate only to lose Ben. Have the hanging bodies disappear. The drones show up to emit a red light while she begins to lose control with the chains, having a mind of their own and grappling with her. It's a bit too much of fucking this shit, but there's something there. And But I also kind of wish that they went just like the whole nine yards with this. She ends up getting stabbed and it seems like by the end of it, she's just fully being taken in by something. And I think it would have been fun to have her be taken into some underworld equivalent of the house they're in or, or something more off the wall. But it just ends up being an illusion of sorts. But that also still had real consequences because she still stabbed. Ben snaps her out of it and for no real reason, he just then decides to take the torture mask off of the two bodies here. I guess because we needed these sick wake up shots. You see, there's an obvious helplessness underwater where you can only go so fast, especially when you're decked out in equipment. And you've awoken two corpses that are now chasing you. And you don't know how fast they can go underwater. So this is terrifying. But it is very funny to see them slowly ease towards the door here and nonchalantly get overpowered. You've probably noticed I'm starting to talk a bit more negative about the movie, uh, but this is where the movie now shockingly declines, even though you would think, well, now we're in the shits. This should be prime time, baby. The last 25 minutes of the movie are uh, the worst it has to offer. They devise a plan to go out the chimney, but then there's a random explosion or something at the top of the chimney. <laughs> Get out.
which then brings a, a, an avalanche of sorts that knocks them both out, which, you know, like, how tall is the fucking chimney? What? I didn't know tiny to medium sized rocks in water would be able to bulldoze you, but here we are. I mean, we're to assume that these are just chunks of brick, right? A uh, brick weighs about what, five pounds? Meaning none of these chunks will weigh over five pounds. And if we're taking Archimedes principle into consideration and the buoyant force of the water, then they shouldn't feel that bad hitting you when they go down the chimney. It's physics. Unless there's a fucking boulder that wasn't shown in the film, then this drizzle of brick did not wipe you guys out. Like fucking Pompeii. Oh wait, where are these rocks? come from. See, if you show those, I wouldn't have had to be the first person to mention Archimedes principle in a movie review. We can move on. <laughs> it's just an excuse to separate them. Tino wakes at the bottom of the chimney and Ben wakes up upstairs locked in the bedroom. They can't speak to each other anymore, but the drone is with Tina. The drone emits a red light again, and I guess this is just the drone signaling danger at this point. That's the thing. Why it knows that. I don't know why the haunted people would warn her, or if like the drone is just like, yo, I got your back, but like either way, fucking stupid. Okay now, this part pisses me off. Ben is locked in a room. He needs to escape or find a way back to Tina. But he takes a little detour to set his sights on a random poster in the room and notices this small old English faded font near the bottom that's in French, mind you. And Ben is not the native French speaker of the two. Guys, do I need to uh, speak English? Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. Pay for subtitles here. He tries his hand at it here and there, but he's far from a pro. On peut pas le rater. So we can't see it? No, we can't miss it. Cantaloupe? Chantaloupe. I mean, singing wolf. Anyway, he reads the first line perfectly and says, <sighs> Fuck. Which is telling us he had an epiphany? Why, you might ask? The first line he reads is a line that Pierre said when they were prepping to get in the water because it was his family motto. So the fuck is, oh, Pierre's behind this, you motherfucker, this must be your family. But neither of them heard him when he said the motto. Pierre muttered it to himself, and then Ben even said, <laughs> that reaction is supposed to tell us that he now knows that Pierre is behind this. Even though he's got fucking nothing to go off of here. But then he still proceeds to keep looking at the poster and then he examines his family tree above just to tell us Pierre, you bastard. You're the mountain I son. What an annoying way to shoehorn that information over to us. At least have Tina figure it out, it would make more sense. Ben gets paid a visit from the wife, which is a neat little shot, and he hides under the bed. Tina gets stalked by the husband, but escapes his clutches. Ben's under the bed plan somehow doesn't work, and he gets captured by the daughter. Tina then gets to Ben's room, and the drone shines a red light on her again. So, danger? Yeah, but she can't seem to pick up on the subtle pattern at play here. So she goes in there, and she sees Ben. But it's not Ben anymore. Did I say the last 25 minutes were the worst? Yeah, I meant the last 10 minutes are the absolute worst. Ben now speaks in possession, and Tina just kind of cares. I'm better now. You'll die before me. We're out of danger now. Ben, step out of it. Tina starts to feel something crawling inside of her suit, and I thought, oh, she's about to fucking slice and dice and gash to try and let it out. I like this. But the movie pussies out, and it slithers up to the inside of her mask. Aww. Reincorporation is so cute. I mentioned reincorporation because Tina also doesn't like snakes. They give us two throwaway lines about that earlier in the movie. I hope there are no snakes here. Watch where you put your feet, darling. Hi, do you think there are snakes? Ben tries to get her to swallow the snake and she's like, nah, I'll just take this off. It's way easier than I thought it'd be. Did you see that? It's the house. She knows. She knows your fears. What? You can't do that. You can't, no. You can't do that when you're only incorporating it once. She knows your fears. Does she? If you're taking the other red light moments into consideration, what is Tina afraid of? Chains? Loud music? Fucking dying? This is never brought up again, and it it's never happened to Ben, by the way. I hope there are no snakes here. No, don't worry. Watch where you put your feet, darling. Why, do you think there are snakes? Like, are we in a hurry, boys? What's going on? Ben is still being cartoonly evil, but she follows him to a secret room he now magically knows about in the cellar. It appears to be a dead end because it's just a theater room? Which, by the way, super out of place for this dinky village home, but... 
Why are we here? Why is this happening? We've been chosen. <laughs> Mr. Montagnac and his son Pierre. Oh, we needed to finish the big Pierre reveal before this movie abruptly ends. So they play their homemade snuff films where they would steal kids from neighboring farms and sacrifice them. The daughter happens to record the locals coming to take revenge on their family by murdering them, hanging the parents, but Pierre was the only one to get away. And now he lives a life of feeding tours to his family the way Pappy taught him. Sarah rips through the movie screen and they have a little join up moment. Tina takes that screen tear getaway and sees an opening in the ceiling. Ben drags her down, attempts to kill her while the family makes their way in, and then Tina stabs his shoulder. You know, after watching this movie again, and writing this far into the review, I think my score has safely dropped for this movie. What did I say? Five? Five out of ten? Yeah, it's more like a three and a half, four. This ending is just so shit. Cause guess what? After she stabs his shoulder, he snaps out of it. <laughs> And this stupid cunt, pardon my French, <laughs> takes her sweet time to coddle Ben and slowly explain what they should be doing at this very moment. Like, I can excuse Ben here. He just had a bad dream. He needs to settle in. But you know the severity of the situation, Tina. I mean, look at where the family is in this shot. Look how close danger is. And she's like, oh, are you okay, a little snookum baby pie? You guys are gonna fucking die. Move. Swim. You don't have oxygen. But yeah, sure, whatever. Ben should absolutely die in vain. <laughs> Not done. He slowly descends dramatically to the ground and for whatever reason the family surrounds him like they're gonna mourn him or some shit, which I'm assuming that's just there to finagle some distance between them so Tina can escape. But then they just say fuck that because in the very next frame they're at her feet. Fuck you. This whole last scene is Buns. She fights him off as her oxygen depletes, and sure, they're underwater ghosts, but the best they can do is just mildly grope her for a bit. She bails on her equipment because she's out of oxygen anyway, and she begins her ascent. She makes it to the initial village grounds, and hey, there's that drone again with bad news. What's with the fucking drone, guys? I Like, I get it. There's ba uh, bad things are about to happen, but like, but like why... Like, why? <laughs> so I guess this is an appropriate time to mention in the beginning of the movie, Tina is timing how long she can hold her breath underwater in her bathtub. And she ends up with a little over a minute's time. But she lies to Ben and says her practice brought her three minutes. And Ben criticizes that number, thinking that that's low for what they're trying to do. So, flash forward, as she is escaping, she runs out of breath and dies. Roll credits. I'm being very serious, by the way. <laughs> she does. Moral of the story, preparation is key, baby. Guys, I'll be honest. This shit is dumb. <laughs> like, what was the point? I get it, she wasn't properly prepped, but we're never shown her being like lazy or negligent with the preparation. She just struggled to achieve the needed time and then we quickly glossed over it. So there's not really like a, you died by your own sword type beat. It's just unfortunate. Like, are we supposed to be focusing on Ben pushing her to do these things and it resulting in their death? Is like, is that what you want? And like, I don't understand what you want from me when the credits hit. What did we learn here? Is it just supposed to be bleak? Is that, is that the move? Because that's not really the vibe leading up to this. So this just makes me think you guys were in the right writer's room like, well, she kind of has to die. I mean, I don't want to write more, do you? Because if she lives, we're gonna need like another five to 10 minutes of screen time for her to go take vengeance on Pierre or some shit and murder him, I don't know. But nope, she drowns, Pierre wins. But wait, word on the street is that there's a after credits scene, let's watch.
3 out of 10. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you guys enjoyed me coming back with a movie review, a horror movie review, please leave a like. Please subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my lovely patrons for always supporting the boy. I upload Patreon exclusives monthly, voted on by my patrons. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi, and I am out. Oh, <laughs>